to you, my brothers and sisters. We welcome you to the Texas Lone Star Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, where the Right Reverend Bishop Don V. Noble is the prelate. I am your humble servant, Pastor Willie Stewart, superintendent of the Bethel District. And we want to invite you to listen and enjoy worship with us in this special conference. This is the Bethel District Conference. Truly, God has been a blessing. He's yet a miracle-working God in the midst of the storm and the trouble and the calamity that you're suffering and going through. God is still with you. You be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. Our help comes from the Lord. God bless you. to you my brothers and sisters certainly it is a pleasure to be here on this evening tonight we count our blessings because God has allowed us uh, this particular opportunity to come and be before you one more time truly I count it as a blessing we are privileged to be a part of the Texas Lone Star Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction where the right Reverend Bishop Don V. Nobles is the prelate I am Pastor Willie Stewart, <clears throat> your servant, superintendent of the Bethel District. We've been blessed on the past two nights or so to have some tremendous great speakers, none other than the right Reverend Charles Ray Beard of the Assured Faith Church of the God in Christ, Fort Worth, Texas. Then also we had the Right Reverend Bishop John E. Owens II, who is the founding pastor of the Christian Temple here in Dallas, Texas. And tonight is the conclusion of this particular conference. And I shall give you what thus said the Lord. I want to talk about 
a particular passage in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, the 24th chapter. Matthew, the 24th chapter. And there is a phrase that strikes my attention. That's Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 34th verse. This phrase is tied into that particular scripture which says, this generation. Uh, that particular phrase, uh, those two words occurs in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and 34th verse, Mark the 13th chapter, verse 30, and also Luke the 21st chapter, verse 33. But we gather our text, we gather this particular argument from Matthew's gospel, the 34th verse. Uh, it reads as such, I'm using the King James Version, it reads as such, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all these things take place. Notice, this generation shall not pass away. That means that they won't be able to escape Till all these things take place, uh, in, the new trans, in the New Living Translation, it reads like this. I tell you the truth. This generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. That is the New Living Translation. And we took the privilege to even uh, bring another Bible expository here. It says, uh, in the contemporary English version, it says, I can promise you, I can promise you that some of the people of this generation will still be alive. Listen, some of the people of this generation will still be alive when all this happens. It makes you wonder what's coming down the pipe. It makes you wonder what's really going on. And yet, in another way or uh, another translation, Jesus uses uh, the word truly. In other words, it is sure that this generation uh, will experience sorrow and suffering. Uh, you won't be able to escape it. Uh, the Olivet Discourse or the Olivet Prophecy is the biblical passage found in the Synoptic Gospels. In other words, all of these particular men of God, disciples, followers of Jesus, had their own account and their own revelation of the teachings here at the Olivet or the, 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 the Mount of Olives, the, Mount, the, the Mountain of Olives, uh, where this discourse or prophecy takes place. Every one of his disciples had their own interpretation. The Olivet Discourse is also known or referred to as the Little Apocalypse. Because of such language, the apocalyptic that includes Jesus warning to his disciples, to his followers, 
that they will suffer and go through tribulation and persecution before the ultimate triumph of the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God used one of the key elements of the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament. It includes his exaltation to the right hand of God, whom establishes him as the king. Jesus' prediction of his returns make it clear that God's kingdom is not yet fully realized according to the inaugurated eschatology, which is the part of theology that concerns itself with death and the final destiny of all human mankind. But rather that the good news that forgiveness of sins is available through his name. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? That was the most significant thing. Uh, Jesus, Jesus was the one, the only one that could bring any kind of Redemption, restoration, and it only came by way through the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus. Can I get a witness there? Now, there are five discourses in Matthew, and the Olivet Discourse is the last of the five that occurs before the narrative of Jesus' passion uh, beginning with the anointing of Jesus. We see now that the narrative in this particular chapter, chapter 24, is the spoken or written accounts of events, things that will ultimately take place. It is the prophecies as it relates to the foretelling and the destruction of of the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, we see in verse 1 of the scripture text, Matthew, the first, the 24th chapter in verse 1, it says, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Now, the disciples were admonishing the structure, how beautiful it was. And it's okay uh, to admire something if it, if it looks good and if it's beautiful, it's okay. But in this particular case, Jesus were, and his disciples were coming from the temple of worship. And they began to talk about how lavish, how beautiful the structure, the buildings of the temple. And in verse 2, Jesus says unto them. Now, I want you to take note in this particular scripture, this particular verse, because this is when Jesus prophetically speaks into the future. And he says unto his disciples, see ye not all these things. Verily, I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Uh, Jesus prophetically speaks. He gets the attention of his disciples. He was telling them in so many words, yes, Admire it now because sooner or later it will not be the same. It will be completely demolished or destroyed. What happens here, it brings into fold a threefold question from the disciples. 
uh, the threefold question, verse 3 says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, now they got away from the people because they had curiosity. Their curiosity had um, overtaken them. And they came unto Jesus privately as saying, tell us, when shall these things be? They were talking about the destruction of the temple and the city, Jerusalem. Tell us when shall these things be? Jesus answers in Luke's gospel. There's another disciple that was with Jesus on the Mount of Olives. But he answers the disciples' questions here in Luke's gospel, chapter 21, verse 20 and 22. And it reads as such. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that desolation thereof is nigh. Meaning that desolation is fastly approaching or it is near. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things, look at this here. He says, these be the days of vengeance, and he says, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Jesus prophetically speaks to his disciples on the Mount of Olives, or rather termed, the Olivet Discourse. The second of the question, the second of the threefold question, the disciples ask, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And that takes us, this answer, that Jesus answered, takes us back to the Gospel of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and he uses verses 4 through 33. And in the sixth verse, we find that Jesus says, uh, he talks about wars. And he says in verse 6, chapter 24, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. And then he says, but the end is not yet. So he talks about wars. The second thing Jesus talks about is the international conflicts. And that takes us on to verse 7, which reads, for nation shall be against nation. That's international. And kingdom against kingdom, again, international. And then he proceeds on to say, and there shall be famines. It's going to be famines. It's going to be times, rough times, famines, no food. He, he goes on to say, there shall be famines and pestilent bugs, which creates diseases. Uh, and earthquakes, earthquakes in diverse places, places that you've never seen earthquakes ever announced but in this hour he says that you shall he speaks to his disciples from the present from the current into the past and he says there will be divers or earthquakes in divers places and then finally my brothers and sisters he proceeds on or the disciple proceeds on to the third question and the third question is, uh, what is or when is the end of the world? This is all here in Matthew's gospel, 24th chapter. And Jesus proceeds to answer their question. The event is the sign of the end. And he proceeds on to teach and 
talk to his disciples, teach them about that. And, he, and from Matthew 24, chapter, verses 4 to 14, Jesus begins and describes the signs of the end. Uh, look at what he says. There are certain events that must take place. So he describes to his disciple the signs he prophetically speaks about what's coming. The signs of the end. One of the signs is that the gospel will be preached in all the world. The gospel will be preached in all the world. Well, now, my brothers and sisters, there are no excuses not to know the Lord because we now live in a time that the communication system is epic. In other words, it's everywhere and in every place. So it presents an opportunity for every man to know Jesus and not have an excuse. So Jesus says that the gospel will be preached in all the world. And then from verse 15 to verse 20 in this same chapter, he talks about abomination of desolation comes upon. Jesus categorically describes certain events, things that must come to pass. And the first thing was... He spoke to his disciple that the temple in Jerusalem and Jerusalem would be destroyed. Uh, and we found that also as we previously spoke of in Luke the 24th chapter, 21st chapter says Jerusalem to be destroyed and to be occupied until the times of the Gentiles are complete. The second event that must take place and will happen is the great tribulation, which is also in Matthew, the 24th chapter, but it begins at, 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 at the 21st verse and it exceeds on to verse 26. I'll read verse one and 21 and it says, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, not ever shall be. So he speaks about the things that are about to happen. Uh, I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters. I don't know how you will interpret this particular passage. But it is not of just the past, but it, 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 it confronts us even to the now in the very present. It confronts us now with the things that we are facing and have faced for a number of years. But it takes us on into future, meaning that there are yet some things that are about to happen. Uh, there will be a time, there will be a great tribulation uh, that will come upon this land that no man has ever experienced or seen before in this world. The third event that Jesus talks about. And that particular event is the second coming of Jesus and judgment. Matthew, the book... The 24th chapter, verses 27 through 31, it talks about after the tribulation, celestial workers, celestial wonders occur. Uh, the Son of Man comes in the cloud. Really what it is saying is that Jesus is about to make his appearance. And he's about to come through the clouds. And uh, just know this, that as Jesus is fastly approaching, the time is now and it is most essent that 
uh, your salvation, that you have salvation, it is most important that you know the severity of the hour that we're now living in. So Jesus prophesies, he prophetically speaks into the now, and we are living in that present time, which is the now. In other words, Jesus is on his way back, and it might be any day now. It might be any moment now. It could be any minute. But rest assured that the Savior, the redeeming Savior, Jesus is coming through the clouds. And he's coming back. He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his people. He's coming back for his church. That's without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for his bride. Yeah. Just rest assured that it's about to happen. And uh, it behooves every one of us that we ought to be getting ready for the return of Jesus. We ought to be about our father's business. Everything that we have been uh, uh, instructed to do, everything that we know to do, every way that we know how to prepare, it is the hour of prep preparation. You can no longer delay you can no longer procrastinate because Jesus is on his way back. And uh, the last of the events that Jesus speaks of, he speaks about a parable. And he tells his disciples uh, from verse 32 through 41, he says, when you see all these things, in other words, when, when you see all of these things unfolding, the temple in Jerusalem, which has been destroyed, and now we're barking upon tribulation, which will eventually lead us into great tribulation. Know that when you see these things, then the second coming of Jesus is nigh. Uh, and, and when you, after the, the tribulation ce celestial wonders occur, the Son of Man prepares itself to, to break the, the, the clouds and it becomes to a lot of us that are not ready to meet the Lord. It is the time of judgment. And to those that are in uh, the household of faith and those that have a right relationship with the Lord, you need not to be troubled in your mind because you are in the right position. You're right where you're supposed to be. Jesus says, and when you see these things, uh, just know that any moment I'm at the door knocking and finally takes me on to verse 34. In this particular chapter, it is, and it reads as such. It reads that... Uh, and it says, Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Well, if there's some doubt in your mind, there you have it. You've read it in the word of God that Jesus is on his way back. And those of us that are living in this hour, we shall not be able to escape the catastrophes and all the events that Jesus speaks of. So we better be ready. I am, I'm reminded of real estate transactions. Normally, after a house is vacated, after a house is sold, then the uh, cleaners are the construction people, whoever they may be. They go in to prepare the house for the new tenant. Or they go in to prepare the house for the new owners. In other words, they make ready that house so that it is livable. In other words, that is suitable to the new tenants. 
that it may be suitable to the new owners. Well, um, that's what we have to do and began to do with ourselves. We must make ready. In other words, Jesus is on his way back. And uh, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, we are, we are the church. We are the church in, 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 in the fullness thereof. We are the church that exists in the now. The church is no greater than the people that exist in this hour. We have this opportunity to um, spread the good news. We have this opportunity to spread the gospel. We have this opportunity to talk about the goodness of the Lord. But if you're not ready, it is the hour and the time that you need to make ready. Well, now, what are you talking about? This body that we're walking and living in, this body don't belong to us. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This body uh, doesn't belong to us. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 tells us, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is on the way back for his temple. He's on his way back for us, our physical body. He's coming back. He's coming back. And no man knows the hour another time that he's soon to make his return. The question is, are you ready for the return of Jesus? Well, let's look at what we got to do. The first thing that you must do is repent of all your sins. Repent of all your wrongdoings. Repent for calamity. Repent for things that you know that are wrong. Sins and things that you continue uh, to embellish and to be in. It's time now for you to repent. Yeah, because Jesus is on his way back. And it's time now that you got to repent if you plan to be with the Father. Matthew, uh, the third chapter, verse 2 says, Repent now, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah, you have the right time now. This is the present time. And uh, you are able to repent now while you're in your right mind. So, you might as well come. Come clean with the Lord. You know your frailties and you know all of your faults. You know your ups and you know your down. But I'm here telling you tonight that I know a man uh, that can forgive you for all of your trespasses. I know a man that will change your whole life. I know a man that will turn uh, all of your midnights into day. I know a man that will break the chains of sin. I know a man that will turn everything around for you. All you have to do is repent. Now the word repent simply means to say, Father, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong. Father, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the havoc that I've caused. Father, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the, 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 the trespasses. I'm sorry for going against your will. Father, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me of my faults? Will you forgive me of my sins? I'm sorry. Well, Lord, won't you forgive me? And the word repents. Once you repent, then you don't go back and repeat the same thing. Don't go back into the same deity. For I know a man that can change all of your, your hardships. I know a man that can bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Uh, what is it that can wash all of my sins away? Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. He will pick you up and turn you around. He will give you a brand new life. There 
is nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is nothing that the blood of Jesus can change. Come on now, while you got chance. The day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Come on in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, we want to thank you for being a participant in this grand old church of God in Christ. Texas Lone Star Jurisdiction. Bishop Don Nobles, the prelate. If you don't know Jesus, there's not a better time than now. We invite you to find a church. We invite you to find somebody, a pastor, friend. Find your way to God, for he's calling you.